today's nonfiction November entry is Nickel and Dime from Barbara Ehrenreich. This controversial book reminds me a lot of Gloria Steinem's 1960s undercover time as a Playboy buddy. For this one, you get to see how Barbara Ehrenreich went undercover or worked as an undercover journalist, taking her privilege as someone who came from a background of more money and basically transforming herself into someone of lower socioeconomic status. She left her family and her money behind and she wanted to see what it would be like living without any real money. This was first premiered in 1999 as an article in Harper's Magazine and then later she expanded it into an entire book. It's a controversial work. I've taught this to different groups of students and something that students today tend to notice and point out is that it seems very strange to them because Barbara Ehrenreich actually came from a position where she knew that if this attempt to go poor, so to speak, went poorly, then she could just run back to her family and the safety and security that they provided. So some of my students have said they did not like the fact that really and truly she did not suffer the stress and the anxiety the true psychological aspect of being trapped in poverty and what that can mean for you. That controversial aspect aside, I believe that Barbara Ehrenreich had good intentions to try to expose for other wealthy people, other people who came from middle or upper class, what it was like to experience the life of poverty. In the book, she explains how she went and became a waitress, barely making any money. And she was exposing the welfare situation of how once you are poor, you are really trapped in that situation. You are also at a much higher risk of injury because the type of jobs that are available to you, of course, when you are at that lower socioeconomic status are the kind of jobs that create repetitive stress injury. She also talked about the difficulty of housing and how expensive that housing costs were. Basically, at the end of the 90s, she was helping along with a couple other journalists expose the fact that ironically, when you are poor, you end up paying more money for things like fast food, which ends up costing you more than planning and preparing ahead of time with groceries that are less expensive and also that that kind of food is worse for you. That as a poor person you are basically trapped in this horrible situation in which you are going to be potentially paying more money for housing because you don't have the proper credit and you can't get access to what you need so you're paying high rent and or you're paying to live in those temporary hotels or motels where they charge you per night or per week instead of being able to pay per month or coming from a family that has a home that's already paid off because you were born into that situation of wealth. As I said, she's not the only journalist who has done this kind of study. There was a journalist named Charles Platt from Wired Magazine who took a job at Walmart, had a similar kind of experience. He wrote about that, I believe, on his blog. There was also some controversy from this because when they put out the book, they used a picture from Fortune magazine that they just had on file, and the woman who was in the picture did not like the fact that they put her on the cover, Kimmy Cho Christensen. So she filed a lawsuit against them for using her likeness and using a photo of her without her permission. So there's been a lot that's happened with the book. I still think that it's worth reading, at least read the shorter form of it as the article, which is in a lot of textbooks, college or high school textbooks tend to use it because it is a good think piece and it generates good discussion. I hope that you enjoyed today's book talk. We will continue with nonfiction November for a couple more days. Every day is a good day for a book talk. Peace.